When I was around the age of five, my parents ended up having a divorce. This divorce impacted my life in many, many, many ways. I ended up living with a, my aunt for a little while, then when my parents were able to finalize the divorce, I went and lived with my mom and she married a man and, and my stepdad was very, very abusive, very evil, very wicked and cruel. I ended up crying every day and finally my mom decided it was best I just went to go live with my dad because of my stepdad. So I go live with my dad and that was somewhat of a normal life. We lived on 17 acres. He remarried someone but they fought like cats and dogs every morning and it just would go on and on just wake up every day and just arguing and over nothing just silliness but it really was abusive and I ended up going to school crying on a regular basis. So by the time I was in my teens, you know, my dad, I just had enough with my dad and I didn't want to live with him anymore. How he was treating me, I didn't feel he was being very fair and, and very abusive and controlling. So my mom had custody, so I decided to go back and live with my mom when I was around 16 or 17. And she was going through a revival in her life, going to church and she was having a lot of experiences. My stepdad was no longer in her life anymore at that level. And she'd even asked me how my walk with God was. I said, oh, it's fine, you know. I was raised Baptist and, and you know, I'd, I'd been baptized in water, raised Baptist, gone to church growing up. And, and I did actually, when I was younger, want to be a preacher and had the move of the Lord, but it never really was something very solid in my life. So as I'm living with my mom, one day on July 9th, 1986, I just gotten off of work and I was driving home and I can tell you the exact location to this day I could take you to it. It was in my car and I came over a hill on the freeway and the sun was shining. It was a little after five. I got off work at five and so it was probably around 5.15 because it was a, I had a, about a 20 minute drive home. All I can say is that God Almighty appeared to me in my car manifested himself in my car started communicating with me and i i was just in awe of what was going on and it, and i heard another language at that time which i was raised baptist so i didn't even know what that was all about and this experience was so powerful and i knew that god was reaching out to me i ended up going home and met up with my mom and and we're sitting on the couch i said mom you've got to leave me to the lord so I kneel down, I say the sinner's prayer. She says, would you like to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit? I said, yeah, I want everything. She says, well, you'll, when you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you'll speak another language. I said, well, God gave me a language in the car. And I ended up speaking that language out. And I still have that language even today. And it's been a great help throughout all these years. So I was 17 years old when this happened. Um, actually 16, going 17. And the experience was just an experience of a lifetime. Changed my life. One thing to note is July 26th is my birthday. So this happened on July 9th. My grandma ends up giving me a book from Smith Wigglesworth called The Secret of His Power. And his Smith Wigglesworth and his testimony had a high impact on me. I studied his stuff for years. But my grandma was a woman of faith and my great grandma was a really strong woman of faith that I found out later and that they, my great-grandma had even cleaned out a hospital of people by praying for them and they just got healed. And she had many signs and wonders in her life. And my grandma that gave me the book, she had prayed that there would be a minister in the family and I ended up being the only one that took up that call. So at, at, at the place I was working, there was um, some other kids there and this was my final, I was going to my senior year and they were going to a Christian school and they suggested that I should go there. So I ended up going to the Christian school my senior year and it was the last year that the school was even open, which was a miracle. While I was there, an evangelist came and he was taking the church to the streets and he was seeing blind eyes open, miracle signs and wonders, and he was taking churches up in Northern, Northern California and take him to the streets and train him how to evangelize. I asked if I could go with him and I found out that I had only was living about five minutes from his house. I ended up becoming his right hand man and the, the experience, the training, 
the exposure to the gospel. I was going down into the heart of San Francisco and Stockton and these very terrible areas and seeing signs and wonders and God heal people and, and help the homeless, which to this day I have a very strong heart for the homeless. And God was just doing miracle signs and wonders. And they, my mom and the, uh, the evangelist I was working with wanted me to go to Bible college and I did not want to go to school. When I got finished with school, I was, I'm, I'm done with it. I don't want to go anymore. But I told my mom, I said, if God pays for all of it, I will go. And then when it was happening a couple weeks later, the dean of the Bible college of the church I was going to said that I could get half off because I was a minister. I was ministering with this evangelist. And so I got excited, got everything going. Then I realized, I said, wait, the deal was that God would pay for all of it. And the evangelist I was working with heard from God to pay for the, the other half. And so I went to Bible college. I ended up becoming Val Victorian because I figured, hey, if God's paying for it, then I better, you know, do the best I can. So I just did everything I could to, you know, be really come out and, and learn everything I could. And I was just fascinated with the Bible. I love the Bible. And, and during these years, when I first became a Christian, I would just spend hours upon hours with the Lord alone, not doing anything, but just in the word, praying and seeking God. Or So I was either in college or I was seeking the Lord and really developing and spending that personal time with the Lord. And in my late 20s, I ended up meeting another man and working at a church. And during that time, I was God went back and healed me of every heartache that I'd had as a child. And it was year, it was it took a couple years and he just cleaned me out and changed me. And I'm not even the same man anymore. And one thing to note also is that during that time with with the book reading the books the books of Smith Wigglesworth, God showed me that later in my 50s that he was going to use me that I was to prepare myself. So now I've written books. I'm in my 50s now and God has definitely opened up what he said. I won't go into full detail of all that he promised me, but he promised that there would be a lot of things that would happen in reference to Smith Wigglesworth. I believed God for that and prepared myself and all these years. Now I'm coming out with two books and I really felt from the Lord just to share this testimony that I believe that it's going to help someone. Maybe you're going through something similar, a divorce, a heartache. I truly had what I call a broken heart and God healed my broken heart and put my feet on a on a stable ground, on a rock. And now he's my Lord and Savior. I've served him. I've loved him. I've been through many things in my life. That was in my, uh, when I was 16, 17, when that first occurred. And now I'm in my 50s. And God has just blessed me, done wonderful things. I've had miracle signs and wonders and outpourings. And it's and God has truly been with me my whole life. And I love him with all my heart, my soul, my mind, my body, and strength.